Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Luigi Scarcelli. This is my show, Friday PM. Uh, I am very happy to have uh, the gentleman Eric Van Wick here with me. Uh, Eric is the co-founder of Picture Maine. Uh, he's also the co-creator of the bill that uh, is going to bring tax incentives to Maine. So it's very nice to meet you, Eric. Nice to meet you. We had a chance to talk a little bit before. Yep. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, I just wanted to kind of get a chance for me as the as a viewer, as a filmmaker, to just get an idea of what's been going on. What's you know? I mean, most people I think are going to say, well, "What's taken so long? Why? Right. Why have we gotten to where we are now?" So. Can you kind of explain a little bit of that to me about you know what got you to the table here, and and then we can kind of go into the bill a little bit. Sure, um, I moved to Maine in 2015, early 2015. Prior to that, I lived in Los Angeles. Prior to that, lived in New York City. Uh, actor, writer, you know, filmmaker, right. uh, recovering actor is what sure. I tell people now. Um, and um, so I continued kind of working as a, a filmmaker, but more moved here to urban flight, you know, the way, the way many people are doing these last few years, especially with the pandemic, um, because it's a better place to raise a family, raise kids, but still wanted to keep doing what I was doing. Um, odd audition down in Boston, and then I got an opportunity to make a film here in, uh, which we shot late 2016, a film called Holly Star, which is now on Netflix with, uh, uh, my good friend and a wonderful filmmaker named uh, Mike Nichols. Um, and then in early 2017, uh, I was approached by a guy named Dan Stevenson, who was the economic uh, development director at, at, at Biddeford. Uh, he now works in Westbrook. Uh, if you've ever met Dan, he is a force of nature. I like to call him the fifth beetle uh, on, on Holly Star because he was our local fixer. And he kind of brought this issue and said, what do you know about film incentives? And, and uh, uh, had somebody ready to go in the legislature that could sponsor the bill and said, you know, why don't you dig into this? I think you might be the guy. And so. Uh, I started to look at it, start to see uh, kind of what the history was, where it was at, what the incentives were and still are currently, why previous bills had failed, and um, also tried to study and draw on other successful incentive programs and, and what they brought and what they highlighted and what made them successful and, and work for the, for the uh, local population. So that's how I got here. Okay, great. And that's, yeah. so that got you to here, which got you to the website, Picture Main. Picture Main Film. PictureMainFilm.com. So we want to make sure uh, we're going to hopefully put that logo right here so you can take a look at it. But before we go too much further into the nuts and bolts of the bill, yeah. let's take a look at a video you guys created. When did you create this video, by the way? It's great. I we, oh, thank you. It, yeah. uh, and that was um, uh, largely spearheaded by other members in the uh, Picture Main film um, team, Amanda Bowers, Molly Connors, Sandra Berkeley, who's yeah. also a wonderful actor um, and, and, and filmmaker. And so Amanda and Molly really kind of uh, Put, uh, went out and shot the footage all over the state, uh, talking with people, meeting with people, and, uh, and that was done a few months ago. Let's yeah. just take a look at the video. We'll come back. We'll talk about the bill itself, uh, and then we'll go from there. So thanks a lot. Maine is magical. I can't imagine living somewhere else, and I would love to be able to work there. Bringing new industries into Maine is going to help stimulate the economy and bring Mainers back to work. We have a way to share Maine and share in that profit. More than ever, we need to diversify our economy and job opportunities because the hospitality industry has taken a huge hit. I think the economy is hurting and I think it's only going to hurt more over the next few years. And this is one of the surefire ways to bring industry into the state. Getting Maine exposed through film would bring more people into Maine on a permanent basis. From that point of view, it would be an economic driver. It would be great if young creatives had more incentive to pursue their ideas and talents within Maine. The potential impact for the state is limitless. If the film industry was here, which is a, an industry that operates year round, who knows, the winters could then be as lucrative as the summers for our business and all of the businesses in Maine. It brings jobs that are high paying and interesting and exciting for a younger generation. Every single thing you see on screen, piece of clothing, prop, furniture, vehicle, and even locations themselves need to be purchased or built locally. 
there are carpenters and painters. From builders to electricians. All those types of things that go along with making movies that is way behind the scenes and we don't think about them. To say nothing of what it's going to do to local restaurants and the development of hotels. The decision on where to shoot is almost always going to be based on what state has the best incentive for that project. And those folks are going to spend money locally. Bringing film to Maine will help all of Maine. The creative industries are booming right now. More entertainment media is being produced this year than at any other time in the past century. And that I've seen the power of film to inspire communities, and I think more of it in Maine uh, would be a great thing. So right now is the perfect time to invest in legislation like this because of the benefits that it will bring economically. It would draw a lot of attention to development around here. It would be a dream to get to do it here. Let's work here. Let's make some TV shows. Let's make some films. My name is Scott Couture. I'm retired law enforcement. Hi, my name is Liz Trumbly, and I'm a student at USM. I'm Chris Elliott. I'm an actor, a writer, and Patrick Dempsey's body double. And, and I, I support, support film in Maine. And, and I, I support, support film in Maine. In Maine. Thank you. We're back. Uh, it was great to, to kind of get an idea of the bill. Yeah. So that's, uh, we can dig into the bill. I mean, was there, did you want to talk about who you worked on the bill with, uh, like the representative or how that all works? I mean, when we talked about that before, I, I had no idea how a bill gets kind of created. And you talked about how a representative gets the bill and it, you kind of help write it. Sure, um, yeah, so what happens so in early 2017, earlier iteration of this bill, LD 1450, uh, the senator that it was attached was uh, Senator Deschambeau, um, who I, I think is still serving. She had a mostly law enforcement background. Um, but what happens is if you, when, when you have a bill and you find a sponsor, you know, that legislator that attaches themselves to the bill it, it might be something that they're interested in, but they attach themselves to a number of bills, right? Okay. And then it's really incumbent on the people that are, you know, either lobbying for the bill or um, uh, creating the bill to, to feed them talking points, feed them the nuts and bolts of it. Um, they still have to have their own kind of personal passion about it. But Senator Deschambeau was interested. She was, I think she was a first time senator at that time. And she was excited about the prospect of it, had enough of a belief system in it. We met a couple times. And so she, on her end, would go up, talk to other legislators, try to find co-sponsors, champion it, you know, up in Augusta, back when you could do these things in person. <laughs> yeah. um, but as far as the language, the first iteration of it was, I basically, wrote from start to finish and I um, cobbled it together from other bills uh, that I researched like New Mexico uh -huh. for example th um, and I really tried to hone in on uh, protectionisms and keeping dollars in state and having a positive local impact um, and so I also tried to seek out the criticism of what these film incentives uh, you know uh, have you know, taken on over time why people have a problem with them and close any gaps in, in that, that, that that I could. Right, and the, the idea that the public perception a lot of times is oftentimes different than what it is. And that's kind of what I wanted to get to is the idea that as though I'm, you know, the regular Mainer guy and I, you know, I'm not interested, I'm this guy not interested in movies that much. It doesn't, you know, get me excited that Brad Pitt's walking down the street in my hometown. Uh, and I'm saying, well, what's this bill do for me? How does this help me? Uh, you know, it brings money into Hollywood. It's all Hollywood elites, et cetera, et cetera. Can you explain why? And I think you told me about this. It, it's not really a film bill. It is a jobs bill. It, it's creation of jobs. This is jobs, 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 which is really what Maine wants. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of... So yeah, I, I've always seen it as a jobs creation bill, and um, but in order, you have to step back for a second and and look at film as an industry. And I think a lot of people sort of are excited about the glitz and glamour of film, of you know, watching a television show, watching a movie, but they don't really sort of think about it as an industry. And to me, 
uh, you can reframe the idea of a film as a temporary independent small business. That's what it is. And it employs uh, many different types of people in, in many different sectors, not just actors, directors, and writers. You know, there, there are people, there's wardrobe people, there are, there uh, are lighting people, there are elect, you know, electricians, there are uh, people who work in construction and props, there are people who work in accounting, there are uh, software folks, there are editing folks. I mean, so these are jobs, these are everyday jobs that people do. Um, food and, trucks? Yeah, yeah. The, the food and hospitality right. is a, yep. is a huge one. Local. And we can get into that because right. that is uh, an industry that was hard hit by the pandemic. Definitely. And, and film was one of the first industries to kind of bounce back, figure out ways to, to thrive in the pandemic and um, sort of put a resurgence in that, that sector. So that's the first thing is just sort of understanding that, that it, 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 this is a business like any other business. And, the, and there are um, openings uh, for many different kind of entry level positions. And you can be in the right place or get an introduction to it and, and have one of these jobs and, and grow you know, uh, as, as a crew member or in the film industry anytime you want. That to me, this um, is the perfect kind of setup for a state like Maine because you, um, you have a lot of seasonal employment here and Maine has one of the highest rates of uh, uh, self-employment or independent contractors in, in, in the United States. Okay. So um, if you're somebody that is used to kind of working one job in the summer or a different job in the winter, you know, you, film provides an opportunity to kind of fill in those gaps for six, eight, 12 week project, um, either work in construction or um, any number of skilled trades that, that you might have. Um, and also because w you're still working on building a crew base here, again, th there are those open opportunities. And we saw that on, on Holly Star, the film that, 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 I, that I produced or helped produce. Um, you know, we had a number of people come in that had no film experience, but they just had, um, you know, the, the desire to learn, the desire to work hard, and they came in and, and, and fit perfectly. And, yeah. now, and now they have, you know, something on their resume that they can build. And that's what you, what you had told me about when we spoke earlier was the idea that people shouldn't get the idea that Hollywood's going to come to town and they're going to bring, you know, like the carnival. Right. All of a sudden the carnival comes to town, they bring all their own self-contained carnies, they trash the town and then they leave. Yeah. There, these are, and also the bill that you're proposing is is really targeting a lot more, five to eight million dollar. This isn't going to be, you said, it's not going to be the big Marvel movies. It's not. No. All of these things where you know they're spending all their money on CGI. This is more like uh, these films that are getting shot in Massachusetts, Canada, places like that, where they would be filming in a small town and really taking the best advantage of the town's resources in a very symbiotic way. Yeah, so I mean, I, I urge people again to go to picturemainfilm.com website, which outlines all the different nuts and bolts of, uh, of the bill, but we can highlight a few of those things. So, that, so yeah. the, the, the first myth that we can sort of uh, completely put to rest is yeah. this notion that we're uh, subsidizing uh, Hollywood salaries right, right. because uh, there is no above the line wage incentive. And so what that means is there uh, actors, directors, producers, um, uh, writers, um, uh, anybody coming from away, sorry, I should say no above the line incentive for those f from away. Um, so that, those are your Hollywood people mm -hmm. right there. Right. And then as far as um, below the line crew, it, 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 it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to fly in um, uh, a, a whole bunch of people when, uh, when you're, uh, trying to figure out your spending as it is and keeping, you know, trying to keep under budget, um, you're going to hire as many local, local, local crew as, as, as right. possible. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, another thing the bill doesn't incentivize is, is airfare as a production cost. Right. Um, so it, it, it would just be a waste of money and, and an unnecessary expenditure right. to, uh, you might fly in your keys, your heads of department, right? Yep. Um, but mostly what you're going to do at that point if you want to qualify for this incentive um, is try and find 
you know, those, those below the line crew members uh, locally and hopefully within driving distance of where your production is, is going to be set up. So those are all things that, that in the bill we're trying to, to, to again, incentivize and, 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 and build so that uh, people are more or less kind of forced to offer jobs to the local community, rely on local vendors um, and put direct spend into that local economy. There, there are, there are per-project caps built into this bill. Um, so, what that means is that at a, at a, at a certain point, I think, I think the first couple of years it's 500,000, uh, and then it eventually goes up to a million. But at a certain percentage point, because you've got that 25 and 20 for um, locals versus non-locals. At a certain point in the five, beyond the five to eight million dollar range, it, it, it wouldn't make sense any, any longer uh, to, to investors. So that's what's going to keep that uh, film cost or overall budget low in terms of it, it wouldn't make sense to be a project uh, above that line of spending. Right. And, and eventually that, sorry, one last thing, ahead. eventually that sunsets. So even the below the line incentive sunsets in five years. So in other words, the bill goes into effect in 2021, or, or sorry, 2022. Yeah. By 2027, you're no longer incentivizing the wages of uh, even below the line crew from away. So again, to qualify for more of that rebate, right, right. you're gonna try and uh, populate your crew with 100% Mainers. So that's maybe 100, 150 jobs per film. I wanna get a chance to uh, talk to some real Mainers outside. We're gonna do a little man on the street Ask some Mainers, uh, what do they think about film in Maine? I, I think I may be surprised. I doubt that I will be. I think people will have a pretty positive opinion about it. So we'll be right back in just a couple minutes. Thanks a lot. Hey, so I'm out here on Munjoy Hill and talk to a couple of Mainers, see what uh, they think about films being made in Maine, why there haven't been as many films made in Maine recently. Just get an idea of what they think. So stick with me, let's go. Would, would you guys be excited about seeing more films made in Maine? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, so, Chris, we've been asking uh, Mainers, like, would you like to see more films being produced here in Maine? Um, yeah, I actually, I mean, it's funny you just brought that up. You know, everybody knows the name Stephen King, right? So it's like, you know, this person in particular has done a lot of, like, the writing for all these famous movies. But the fact that we can't have a movie filmed here is something that after you just saying that, I'm like, wow, yeah. Like, the setting of these novels that this person has written should be in the you know in the location of where they originated from so yeah i, would, I mean that's, that's something i would love to see uh i was just wondering would you like to see more films being made in maine than have been currently sure well, yeah. uh do you know christian when the last movie with a budget over five hundred thousand was made in maine i do not I, I have no idea <laughs> it almost seems like i'm doing a game show uh it, would it shock you to find out it's been like since the 90s since there was any big budgeted movies being filmed here. Wow, that's crazy. This is a beautiful place and I think um, more films should be shot here. It's wonderful here. We're back. Thank you very much for sticking with us. Uh, that was very informative to get a chance to see what Mainers think. Uh, so, but what I really want to dig into, Eric, is like, again, uh, what, what happened? Why is it that Maine is just no longer competitive? I mean, I feel like there was a time when there was a lot of movies being made here something seems to happen somehow other places uh states other countries sometimes have passed us by that look like maine whereas i think maine does have a very a great spirit has some, some beautiful places to film it why why is it that you think that a lot of films that are taking place in maine like i see it at netflix hbo mm -hmm. the movie theaters none of them are being filmed in maine what is going on what do you think yeah so i mean there's a lot at work here, but so I'll, I'll try to well, I'll try to be as concise as possible. But look, you live in Maine, you know it's a special place, right? You know that it's more than just lobsters and Christmas trees and uh, um, and and cider donuts. So uh, you're like I said before, it's never it's 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 never going to be, and and I don't think we're aiming for it to be this sort of catch-all place where you build a giant studio and you know you shoot Waterworld here, or you shoot, wow. you know, the next Star Wars. It's not gonna be that. But for 
the folks that um, outside of Maine and within Maine that want to create Maine stories and keep exploring those spaces, you know, and obviously the most obvious example is for Stephen King, um, then it, this bill gives them an opportunity to do just that because if you lived here, you know the difference between, right. you know, a, a, a main tree or a main, you know, salt box house and, a, and, and uh, you know, and somewhere else in Massachusetts or, or Canada. So that's, that's really what it's about. Now, the question as to why that's not happening, well, it comes back to, you know, the business side of it and the bottom line. So if you're an investor, and you're, and you're like, I'm going to fund this film for $3 million. And it's like, okay, well, uh, the story takes place in Maine. I'd like to film in Maine. That's where the vision is. That's where, you know, we're going to get, we're going to get the most authenticity. Uh, the investor's then going to say, does it have an incentive program? Well, no. I mean, it has a 10, 10 to 12 percent uh, wage rebate and a 5 percent uh, production spend, but that's really based on ta tax liability. So it, uh, of a production which also, you know, almost always has none. So it doesn't really translate to anything. Versus Massachusetts, where they're giving away 30 percent on everything, your investor is going to say, "We're going to Massachusetts." Right. 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 Yep. So it's, I mean, it's just straight business. Um, and 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 who can blame them? And you know, we'll figure out a way to kind of make it look. Uh, like that main right. town, and you know, as we spoke about before, that's you know very publicly what happened with uh, uh, Tumble Down, um, you know, Sean and Desi's film, and, uh, and and you know they were heartbroken, and and that's the thing with the incentives that we have right now, anything above five hundred thousand dollars, it no longer makes sense to film here. That's sort of the cutoff. So you, there are films that are made here, but uh, most of them sort of bump up against that you know five hundred k cap. And then if you're going beyond that, you're shooting somewhere else. So what this bill is proposing is 25% uh, wage rebate for locals, 20% yep. uh, wage rebate for non-locals. Again, that's excluding the above the line portion, so the, 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 right. the Hollywood, right, yep. for the non-locals, mm -hmm. and then a 25% production spend. That's going to make um, it competitive enough so those uh, main centric films in that five to eight million dollar range and that's still sort of a wide net um, are going to be able to say yeah we can film there and we can employ the local population and uh, we can repurpose some of those old buildings and you know again you and I spoke about this right. yesterday yeah. the, the nice thing about uh, 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 you know film incentive is is uh, you know, it's it and an and, and investment in that is it's it's low impact up front. You have a crew that comes in here. You don't need to build stuff b beforehand and, and and put your money in on the front end and hope for the best. You don't get the rebate until you spend the money. I think Mainers in general um, get it. You know, yeah. they understand. Right. Um, and I think that they. They have seen enough films and read enough about this and, and, and understand how business works. And I again, I say to people, I don't equate this any different than the main seed program, for, for example, which uh, offers up to a 50% rebate for businesses setting up here. Um, it's just, again, having that, that uh, sense of it. Um, you know, there are people who push back because there's no sort of, you know, like really, um, hard dynamic fiscal analysis on what the benefits of uh, film incentives bring. But, you know, as, as you and I spoke about, um, if it, there's a whole bunch of spending going on at the federal level right now with, with uh, uh, stimulus uh, money that went directly into people's pockets and also uh, stimulus money that's going to the states. And clearly that was set up to uh, engender more spending, right? So if you cash those stimulus checks, then to me, as far as I'm concerned, you can't be completely against the idea of, of film incentives, which is, uh, you know, subsidizing the idea of these businesses setting up. But as I said, the difference between the main seed program and those other programs is that the rebates aren't given or cashed out until that spending is in place. And, ag and again, I think a lot of Mainers get this, everyday Mainers that don't have any uh, experience with the, with the film business. They, they understand. I think at the, at the legislative and the right, administrative right. level, yeah. uh, that's where it starts to get a little murky and, I, and, and maybe uh, they haven't quite uh, caught up yet because the people that I've spoken to and even some of the legislators that I've spoken to understand this concept 
and understand that it's a uh, creative, out-of-the-box way to um, help, uh, uh, you know, along with other items to jumpstart the economy. Um, and then it, it more or less dovetails in with uh, the, the governor's new economic plan, which talks about uh, creating 75,000 jobs over the next 10 years and um, uh, keeping young people here in state. And, and, and film incentives and film, I think, are, are two things that would do just that. Yeah, thank you so much. Me on. And thanks for being on. It was great. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for a great show. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week. Take care. Thanks a lot.